what is up so in this video i'm going to be showing you how to set up a vm if you didn't know a vm is basically a computer inside of a computer that might not make much sense but you'll kind of see what i mean later on so with virtual machines you can basically have like a mac inside of a windows computer you can have linux inside of windows you can have windows inside of linux you can have basically any os inside of any os it's pretty cool last video's comments were just spammed with vm requests you look lonely i can fix that but don't worry ebola man is here to save the day let's get straight into it so there are a couple of hypervisors out there but my favorite is virtualbox it's just open up your browser type virtualbox and yeah oracle vm virtualbox click on that so you want to click on this huge download button and over here we see the virtualbox binaries and the platform packages and you basically want to choose whichever your os you're running and i'm running windows so i'm just going to click on the windows host i'm going to be brought to my download folder and by the way, I do recommend creating a folder for all your VM stuff and uh, keeping it inside of a drive with, you know, more storage, maybe not your C drive. If you have like an external drive, use that because VMs do tend to take up some storage, decent amount. So yeah. And once you have the virtual box set up, downloaded, you just want to run it and it's just going to be a basic setup and just next. You don't have to change any of these settings next and you just proceed with the download. And by the way, the release that I was hyping up a few weeks back of a project is this. It's my new community. You can head over to this link and watch this video of me basically explaining everything inside of it. It has different courses. It has a Discord server. The Discord server is finally back. It is paid though, but that's completely up to you. I think it's a pretty cool thing. I have a bunch of different files in here, videos. Anyway, just watch this video if you're interested. I basically explain everything. So yeah. <laughs> Now, to download different types of VMs, you need to get the disk image or the ISO file. Or you can actually even get like a pre-built VM. Well, more on that later. And you can basically get an ISO for any OS online. But for me at least, all I really need is Windows 10 and Kali Linux, so I'll show you how to download those. So, I'm going to start by showing how to get Windows. So for Windows, you just want to search for Windows 10 ISO. And don't click on any of these other weird links because they might have viruses and other shit inside them. So click on the Microsoft link. This we want to click on. So on this page, this is where you download it. But we're going to have to do a little bit of a bypass because they want you to download the media creation tool. That's basically what you use to, you know, create the ISO file. But you have to download it, set it up, blah, 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 blah. Basically, no one's trying to do all that. So I'll show you how to bypass it. Right now, our user agent says that we're on a computer. But if we say that we're on an iPhone, it's just going to let us download the ISO file right away. Since it's an executable, you can't run that on an iPhone. And it'll be a lot easier. So we're going to right click, inspect, then click on these three dots and click on show console jar and scale this up. Then click on these three dots and click on network conditions. So right now your user agent is using your browser default, which you don't want since we're trying to bypass it. So just uncheck this and under custom, you can literally just choose any phone. I'm going to go with an iPhone. So I'm just going to choose Safari iPhone. And yeah, now we just need to reload the page. And here we go. Choose your edition, confirm, then choose your language. And from here, you can download your ISO file. Just make sure to save it in the same VM folder if you want and make sure that it ends with ISO. So that might take a minute to install because you're literally downloading an entire OS basically. So you're going to have to wait a little bit. And in the meantime, I'll show you how to download the Linux VM. So Kali Linux actually has a pre-built VM, which is a lot more convenient and easier. So just search for Kali Linux uh, VM and you'll see this www.kali.org. You want to go there. And click on virtual machines and over here you'll see a bunch of pre-built virtual machines so we see all the different hypervisors here and we have virtual box so we're gonna click on this one and automatically it's gonna let us download it and now we're actually gonna create our vms so open up virtual box i already have some vms but you can ignore them because for you this whole area will be blank and now we're gonna create them so since kali linux comes as a pre-built vm it's super easy to add. You just click on add and extract the Kali archive. And over here, you'll see some VBox files. So you just want to click on one and click on open. 
and just like that it'll create your kali linux vm now for windows 10 it's a little bit different instead of add you want to click on new call it whatever you want and make sure you're in your vm folder and choose your iso image then you want to click on next and set a username and the password they don't have to be too complicated if you're worried about security then switch the host name to whatever you want i usually just you know call it something like this you can call it whatever and you also have an option for your product key here but no one's trying to pay 80 bucks for the freaking product key it's fine educational purposes only right then you click on next and over here you choose how much hardware you're giving it since it's a computer inside of a computer and it does need hardware to use so so you should check your memory while you're just using your computer on a regular basis right now for example i'm only using five gigabytes but let's say with all my usual software open i use around like seven that means i have nine free gigabytes of ram and you can allocate it you know nine if you want uh you should usually give it a little bit less to be safe because it's just going to make your computer slow and no one wants that so don't give it too much don't give it too little either somewhere around three four should be fine depending on how much you have of course and same thing for the processors don't give it too much uh, stay in the green zone but yeah i'd advise you know stay around the middle don't go too far up especially if you're gonna have multiple vms on your computer then click on next and now you're gonna be creating the virtual hard disk which is gonna be the vm storage and over here you can choose how much you want to give it so for windows you should usually give it at least 50. linux is a little bit less but for windows i choose at least 50. then you click on next and finish so if you're going to be using vms for cybersecurity, which you probably are you want to make sure that they show up as their own device on the network and that they have their own local ip because by default they use network address translation and you don't want that if you're trying to you know actually see it as its own device so you want to go into settings then go down to network and by default it's going to be on that it's going to be like this you want to switch it to bridged adapter yeah just like that you'll be able to see it as its own device on the network it'll have its own local ip its own mac address and yeah and if you have something important on your vm and you don't want to lose it or rebuild it and you're about to do something really destructive like i don't know on some crazy virus or something uh you can save its state its current state and then restore it later that's called taking a snapshot so you just want to click on this little menu thing and go into snapshots and right now you can take a snapshot and just save it and now let's say you go back to your vm you run mems virus it destroys it and you want to go back to how your vm was before you just go here click on restore and it gets restored to the state of the snapshot you can also go to activity and it's basically kind of like a task manager for your vm you can just like track the different loads and yeah and there's also a file manager which could be useful so yeah that's pretty much it um if you can try to use pre-built vms that's what i recommend because you know setting them up is just like setting up a normal os like once you have your iso loaded for windows you're basically gonna have to go through the entire windows setup which is gonna take at least like 40 minutes so yeah and this is kind of a misconception that i've seen a few people have and it's that whatever you do in your vm will not affect your actual computer you can delete system 32 you can mess it all up and it will not affect your computer at all so don't worry you can literally just do whatever you want that's the fun part about vms your host operating system is completely protected so don't worry and yeah that's it for this video uh if you have any questions ask chat gpt because i don't even know i'm not even that good at vms i've just been doing them for like few years now and just i mentioned them a lot in some of my videos and if you know you for example didn't know how to set one up or what it is i guess now you know and that just cleared up the whole virtual machine thing so yeah anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next vid bye